On January 24, 2016, a remarkable series of sentence fragments were discovered in that grand repository of all human wisdom known as Twitter. They appeared on the feed of a mid-tier hip-hop artist named Bobby Ray Simmons Jr., or B.O.B., and were of a sort far removed from the typical braggadocio and dissing one normally associates with hip-hop culture. No, Mr. B.O.B. had something to say. Initially just a series of images, his aforesaid tweets culminated in a simple question. Where is the curve? It seems that Mr. B.O.B. had begun to question the long-held theory that the Earth is round. Responses to his idiosyncratic hypothesis were many, varied, and often somewhat confused, frequently shifting off-topic and revealing, not for the first time, I'm sure, the constraints placed on scientific and philosophic discourse by a 140-character limit. Mr. B.O.B.'s comments became increasingly defensive. They want me to be a good little rapper, and sing and dance, and don't question things. I'm going up against the greatest liars in history. You've been tremendously deceived. No, I'm not crazy. Yes, I'm feeling fine. No, I'm not doing anything stronger than we. Am I doing this to promote my music? No. Twitter storms are seldom congenial events, but this particular storm took on a unique character when Neil deGrasse Tyson, head of New York's Hayden Planetarium, attempted, perhaps inadvisably, to realign Mr. B.O.B.'s dish to a more conventional frequency. When simple facts proved ineffective, Tyson resorted to what I believe is now termed throwing shade. Dude, to be clear, being five centuries regressed in your reasoning doesn't mean we can't all still like your music. Personally, I endorse Dr. Tyson's position. After all, I quite like airplanes, though I'm beginning to wonder if B.O.B. has ever been in one. It was at this point that the storm veered off Twitter in most spectacular fashion. A day later, B.O.B. released a single called Flatline, ostensibly intended to debunk Tyson's claims, it was less a treatise on geology than a rambling tour of modern conspiracy lore, referencing the death of Malcolm X, Freemasons, and even lizard people. It even contained the line, indoctrinated in a cult called science, making it arguably the first ever diss track aimed at science itself. Tyson, as he admitted to B.O.B., is not a rapper, but his nephew is, and so they collaborated on a response track called Flat to Fact, which attempted to set the record straight. The whole affair culminated with Tyson delivering a science-flavored takedown of B.O.B. on the nightly show with Larry Wilmore, complete with a mic drop to the cry, This is gravity. I wish I could say that was the end of it, but as Brian Dunning noted in his excellent Skeptoid podcast, a superb online resource I recommend to everyone, a quick glance at Google Trends shows that the Tyson B.O.B. beef-fueled spike notwithstanding, Google searches for the term flat earth have steadily increased since January 2015 and show no signs of slowing down. But why? What could have inspired B.O.B., Tia Tequila, hundreds of YouTubers, and a rising tide of perplexed Googlers to question the most basic facts about the nature of the world, facts we supposedly learn in primary school? What possible reason could there be for adopting a view of the world that requires every pilot, sailor, scientist, postal worker, astronautical engineer, other engineer, telecommunications technician, and reasonably seasoned traveler on the planet to be in a massive conspiracy to hide the true nature of the universe from the hoi polloi, one which, once you factor in their families and acquaintances, the number of people required to enact it might very well exceed the number of people being conspired against. Here, I must again be thankful to Brian Dunning, who did most of the legwork tracking down the suspect zero of this flat-earth frenzy. His name is Eric Dubay, a yoga teacher living in the Philippines who divides his time between instructing the unfit on the proper down dog and, in his words, exposing the global conspiracy from Atlantis to Zion. And in case you're thinking that the Zion edition was simply an overzealous application of ancient conspiracy tropes, one of his videos is called Adolf Hitler versus the Jew World Order. Interest in the Flat Earth began to rise shortly after he self-published his book, The Flat Earth Conspiracy, the apparent spring from which this current strain of flat earthism has flowed. 
This can be seen again in the lyrics to Flatline, which name drop virulent anti-Semite and Holocaust denier David Irving. At this point, many of you are probably asking for evidence. Calling out anti-Semitism is one thing, but what bearing does it have on science? Well, as a start, let me offer the standard of evidence proffered by one of the originators of the current model. First, the sun, moon, and stars set later for those in the west and earlier for those in the east. Also, the difference in the times of observation between locations is proportional to the distance between those locations. In other words, the number of seconds per mile is the same, as would be expected if it passed over an even curved surface. If the Earth were concave, the Sun would be seen rising first by those more toward the west. If the Earth were a flat plane, the Sun would rise and set simultaneously for everyone on Earth. If it were any other shape, such as a polyhedron, then the Sun would appear to rise and set at the same time for everyone on each planar surface. If the Earth were cylindrical, with flat planes on top and bottom, no one on the surface would ever see the extreme northern and southern stars. In reality, as one travels north, southern constellations disappear over the horizon. And finally, all tall structures, such as sailboats, disappear over the horizon bottom first, as if they were descending into the sea, due to their being hidden by Earth's curvature. This list does not even mention that constellations in the moon appear upside down in the southern hemisphere, that it is possible to travel only due west and yet still arrive east of your point of departure, and that, well, Ships have crow's nests for a reason. Climbing to a higher position allows you to see over the curve of the horizon, a fact you can check yourself if you ever watch a ship disappear from sight and then climb a tree. You'll see it again. For similar reasons, Muslims at the top of the Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest building, must fast for two minutes longer than those on the ground during Ramadan, as the sun sets two minutes later. For every viewer demanding evidence, I am sure there is at least one viewer arguing that I am preaching to the choir, and that the shape of the earth is not a theory in need of defense. But in truth, there is much mythology and misinformation contained in the story of the flat earth, and even if you think you know everything, you probably don't. For instance, I did not take the above proofs from a NASA website or high school textbook. Those proofs were paraphrased from the mathematical syntaxis, better known as the Almagest, composed by a Greek-Egyptian philosopher named Claudius Ptolemaeus, sometime during the reign of the Roman emperor Antoninus in the 2nd century AD. Ptolemy, as he is known today, was no conspiratorial outlier. He was simply restating what was by then common knowledge to any educated person in the Greco-Roman world. By the time Ptolemy wrote his treatise, evidence of the Earth's sphericity had been recorded for hundreds of years. Aristotle cited evidence for a spherical Earth in 330 BC. Nor was Ptolemy's work forgotten by history. Indeed, so complete was the dominion of the Almagest over Western astronomy that its authority would not be overturned until Isaac Newton published his Principia Mathematica in 1687, 1,500 years later. Belief in a round Earth is, quite frankly, as old as Western civilization. Asking who discovered the world was round is not dissimilar to asking who invented the wheel. There have, however, been a number of individuals who have been erroneously credited with having done so, and we will be looking at some of the most notorious examples in the next episode.